Oh, aloha, big way trading family. I'm going to go ahead and start it off with the index charts. We only have two new, <clears throat> excuse me, high quality long positions to go over. So really quick, let me just show you how ridiculous, ridiculous this index is. As you can see, the IWM, Russell 2000, this is what we call a megaphone pattern or the start of a diamond pattern. And either way, it's not good. Now, a diamond pattern starts out like this, and then it goes in the other direction like that also, but just in the opposite way that this is being made currently in the megaphone and then normally if something like that fall uh i guess creates itself as the diamond pattern normally it resolves to the downside also megaphone patterns are pretty bad because they're very volatile and once we get to this extreme range up here it should be a new breakout to new highs for the market but instead it'll be just part of that long uptrend line and then you don't find support again to I guess we could start to draw an uptrend line through here, but normally it's to the bottom of the megaphone until the megaphone pattern is eventually broken. So right now, this is ridiculous. Again, it hasn't <laughs> changed all year long, and it was just like this following Brexit in 2016. But you can see why V moves aren't healthy. I mean, just here alone, why V moves aren't healthy. And then you V move back to new highs, and then you're back down. Then your V back move to new highs and you're back down. Then your V back move to new highs and you're back down. Your V back to move highs and you're back down. Now your V back move to new highs. What do you think is going to follow? So just to put it into further perspective, let's look at some of these index charts. The NASDAQ is one of the few index charts that is an extremely overbought via its MACD and RSI. So technically there's still room to run in this index. But if we look at some of the other indexes, if I could ever type anything right, if you look at the Russell 2000, you could see the RSI is back into overbought territory. Doesn't really go much in a V-shaped market where you oscillate around. Overbought's usually overbought. Oversold's usually oversold. And since this is an oscillating market and we're overbought, <laughs> and then you have the MACD also back to overbought areas in this chart with a range bound tape. So that's never very good. Then you look at the S&P 500. You can see the MACD has moved well off its lows. RSI is getting to that overbought area. It isn't quite there yet, but I mean, it's not gonna take much more to get it there. Dow Jones Industrial Average is at the overbought line. MACD still has room to run. And obviously we could easily just pull back, find support at the breakout level and go higher. But the main point is, is that the Markets aren't in the most healthiest position following yet another V-shaped rally. So going long here is very risky. And just an indication that we're probably starting to get near a short-term, you know, top in the market. CTRL, NOVT, PLPC, KAI, and ROBO all produce end-of-day 20% profit-taking signals, and SPR came within a whiskers hair of doing the same. So I'm getting a lot of 20% sell signals. The market continues its V-shaped move into overbought territory. We still have that low VIX environment, and we still have about three to four weeks, technically, of poor seasonality to get through. Mid-October is when seasonality changes. So with all that in mind, let's get to the two new long positions that are quote, quote, quality. First off, it should be said, I expanded what my main perfect speculator scan. It looks for, I have two of them that I run. One for stocks over 50 as per the Brad Kodish War Perfect Speculator book. And another one that looks for stocks early by just looking for stocks over 40 before they get to 50. I decided then also, with the market being so strong, I've been noticing some of these little stocks that have easily made previous 100% moves but haven't set up correctly via the proper green bop. I've been missing out on them. So I expanded my perfect speculator scan to include stocks of any price, and that's where these two new long positions come from today. So if I do not have that perfect speculator scan, I still think INSM would have triggered, obviously, in my max green bop scan. But I'm not sure I would have taken it with that alone. But knowing psychologically that it's a perfect speculator quality biotech stock, um, yeah, with that previous gap up, with us holding the gap up basically at the 50% Fibonacci retracement level of just this move post gap up, that's extremely bullish. So I decided to go ahead and go long that one. And the MX position, this is a stock I'm familiar with, isn't of the highest fundamental quality currently. 
but it's a perfect speculator scan stock. So let's just go into what it looks like. So MX triggered in my perfect speculator scan was in any other scan due to not having green bop or above average volume. But the reward risk ratio compared to the previous uptrend, I mean, if I just randomly go from here to here, 96%, if you even half that to 45%, and let's say all hell breaks loose at this stock before I cut losses at 10%, I'm looking at over 5 to 1 reward risk ratio, and that's what I want. And with the first cut loss level, I'm looking at under 5% loss, and like I said, if all hell breaks loose in the final position, 12%. So no matter what, you should be able to contain the losses to 5%. I'm recommending this low right here. Final cut loss, 1045, and the first cut loss is obviously 1085, wherever the hell that is, or maybe it's the 1095. Yep, it's the 1095. So 1095 should be your first cut loss level on MX. And then for everyone, 1045, me, I'm going to be a little bit more, I'm going to give it some more room on the final cut loss to 1005. But if this first cut loss level goes at 1095, I will be moving either half for all of my stops up to whatever the new low is if it does not touch the 1005. But I recommend anybody that takes this trade, use 1095 and use 1045 as your personal stops. And don't pay more than 1155 the high of the day. It'd probably be smarter to do 1150 since it's a more lesser, higher quality overall stock. But since MX is a perfect speculator scan quality stock, but it's a sub 50 stock in this kind of market, only 1% of my capital goes into this trade. Like I said, limit order 1155. First cut loss 1095. Final cut loss 1045 is what you should probably do. I'm going to give it some room to 1005. And then the final new long position, INSM. Once again, made my max green bop for five day scan, but it was initially found in my perfect speculator any price stock. It's a biotech perfect speculator scan. That's really, really good. You got the powerful gap up, holding the 50% Fibonacci retracement overall. The pullback didn't come on any huge volume. Volume's kind of below average as it consolidates here. You have the bullish candle over candle. It's not engulfing, is it? I don't think it is. It's not engulfing completely. But you have the bullish candle over candle with the near high day close. Very, very, very good, solid, long setup. Want to get long INSM. Limit order, 28.29, the closing price because it's extended from its 20-day moving average. First cut loss, 27.18. Final cut loss, 24. Once again, if it loses 27.18 on heavier volume or loses green bop as it loses it, I will be moving all of my final sell stop to whatever the new low a day is as long as this doesn't get taken out. If it pulls back on lower volume and keeps max green bop or even green bop until it fails on heavier volume, I'll give it all the way back to 24 to prove itself because that's a pretty big solid gap up and it looks pretty good. But INSM should be 1% for being a perfect speculator sub $50 stock and then 1% for being in my bop scan. So it should be a 2% long signal, but we have to half, half it because it's extended from its 20-day moving average. So once again, 1% of my account capital into INSM, limit order 28.29, 27.18 first stop, 24 second stop, 1% of my capital into MX, 11.55, 10.95, and 10.45 are the two stops. All right, that's it for the quality long signals. I also have two speculative long signals posted for platinum members. You can go check it out, but I wouldn't, uh, be in a hurry to take either one of those longs with us being so overbought. I'm thinking that the market might need to pull back, and I'm thinking that the FOMC two-day meeting might be the perfect catalyst to have the market pull back for the rest of the week. As long as we pull back on low volume and the majority of my long positions hold key support levels, I won't be too worried. All right, everyone. I'll see you in the chat room.